What is leadership in crisis? As a professor at ESCP Europe and as somebody who is extremely interested in leadership, especially the negative side of leadership, I would like to say a few words about leadership in difficult times. There is a group of people studying leadership who have always been very fond of saying that human beings are rational decision makers and that sustainable competitive, competitive advantage is based on things like economies of scale, being in the right industry, being in the right niche, you know, being in the right strategic position and all these kinds of things. Uh, I have always happily contradicted them by stating that none of this th those things really matter unless the human equation is taken into account. Human beings being rational decision makers is a myth and this is even more so in times of crisis. Crisis comes from the Greek word, from a Greek word, crisis, and it basically means the time to decide. So crisis is not something inherently negative, it is more, uh, there's both. There's a lot of opportunity in crisis, a lot of positive things. So what is obsolete should disappear to make space and make place for something new and maybe better. Now the problem is that what happens in crisis with people is that their behavior becomes completely non-linear, unpredictable and resistant to rational thinking. People grow from a situation where they trust to a low trust position, from optimism to foreboding, from confidence they go to fear, and from organizations where the rules are clear to organizations where nobody knows anymore which rules will apply. And this of course drives people back to basics, back to what they still feel is safe. So basically leaders uh, in crisis are faced with distrust, fear, uncertainty and expecting the worst. Now how to deal with this? Leadership in crisis has no, there's no magic new formula for this. On the contrary, it is something that is even more reinforced of what should already be done and what already is done by certain effective leaders in organizations every day. So I would like to give maybe two pointers, one of them being communication. Uh, we have talked a lot about communication, everybody knows we have to communicate, it's become a cliché, but what leaders really have to do in times of crisis is to over-communicate. People in times of crisis are afraid. They are anxious, they feel fear, they need to be reassured. In these times it is very important for a leader to be present, to be there, to be tangible, and even though leaders themselves very often don't know, you know what exactly is going on, uh, they need to give as much contextual information as possible to people to address fears and anxieties and to pre prevent speculations and rumors which very quickly you know, come up when communication is not done perfectly or appropriately. Uh, and the second pointer, maybe the more important one, is that uh, if you think about crisis, uh, what will happen is the best people will leave the organization first. It's very logical, they are the ones who have the knowledge, they are the ones who have the experience, they will very easily find another job. Um, now, let me illustrate with a little story uh, this point. There was once a general uh, who, on the eve of a battle, was thinking about how to, how to do this battle. He knew that the battle was decisive, the battle would win or lose a war. He had already discussed the situation with his three colonels, everything was set, the big battle plans were made up, but he felt he should just say another word to these people. So he called them in one after the other. Number one came in, colonel number one, who the general knew was a micromanager. So the general said to him, Colonel, we have already discussed everything, but I would like to make sure and once again go through with you in every detail the battle plans and what is the focus and how to do everything. And he did this, it took a long time, but then the colonel left very happy because he was reassured about how to advance. The second colonel came in, who was an entrepreneurial type, and so the general said to him, Colonel, we have already discussed everything, I completely trust you, I know how you function, we have already won wars together, just go ahead and do your best and we will win the war. So this colonel also left very happily and very reassured because he felt good about that's what he knew how to do. And in came the third one who was a counter-dependent type. Counter-dependent types, types are the ones who when you say the sky is blue they will look up and say no, it's red. So the colonel, knowing very well, his, uh, the general knowing very well his colonel said, um, colonel, I have called you in here because I am very desperate. This battle is lost tomorrow, the war is lost, we cannot win. Everything is already decided in advance, it's finished. And he knew exactly that this colonel would walk out of his room and be completely determined to prove him wrong. And this is exactly what happened. So they won the war. Now what I would like to say with this is that it's very important to know your people. It is very important to know your best people, to lead them in a way they need to be led, to give them appreciation and the possibility to do their best. And this is valid as much in times of crisis as in better times, which I hope very soon will come again.